Welcome to One Purpose, a covenant fellowship of believers dedicated and united as one to pray, worship, build, and perfect for God's kingdom. We invite you to connect with us for our weekly services, Sunday School, 9 a.m., Sunday Morning Worship, 1030 a.m., Tuesday Bible Study for Adults and Children, in person and Zoom, 7 p.m., Wednesday Word Wisdom with Counselor Billy Washington, via Skype, 7.30 p.m., the Prayer Wall Intercessory Prayer Line, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., and Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m., all in the Central Standard Time Zone. For more information, visit our websites. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with us in one purpose. you therefore brethren by the mercy of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that God good and acceptable and perfect will of God. May God have the blessings on the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord this morning, saints. Ooh, we serve a mighty God, amen. Matters what we see, what we hear, we still have a God that sits high on the throne. And he looked down on us to let us know that all is well and everything is well. Amen. The Bible says those who sow in tears will reap in joy. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry because God is going to bless you. Get it out. Crying is a ministry. We got to, we got to come from the, from the bottom, from the back, to the up, and to the front. Amen. And we can't be... We can't be stagnated by those things that have already come to pass. Amen. So we're going to ask the praise team to come up and get y'all up out those seats and get you to screaming and hollering up in here. Maybe some of you might take out and run, huh? Yeah, we need some running up in here. Amen. So praise team all of y'all that are in here come on we'll take what little bit we have because i sure can't do it by myself and we're going to bless the lord with our praise and our worship and our songs our hallelujahs and amens don't be afraid the devil can't do nothing to you that god don't allow amen all right now praise team let's do this <laughs> you cared for me because you cared for me in such a special way in such a special way and yes i praise you 
I lift you up. I'm magnified. That's why my heart. That's why my heart is filled with you. I love you, Lord, today. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me. Because you care for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. And yes, and yes, yes I, I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. I magnify. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Next part is, my heart and my mind. Just, my heart, my mind. My, mind. My, soul belongs. my soul belongs to you. You paid the price you for me. The, the price, price for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. I magnify. And I magnify your name. That's what.
I give him praise? I'm giving the true and living God a, a great praise. I'm going to give our risen Savior a great praise. Let's give the true and living God, the one who died for your sins, the one who rose again, the one who bled and died, the one who was beaten all night long, the one who went through the cross. Father, we lift you. Father, we lift you. Father, we lift you. On this day, you're still worthy. On this day, you're still magnified. On this day, we still worship you. On this day, we exalt you. We lift you up. And we declare you to be great. And you declare to be praised. You're great. And greatly to be praised. You're great. And greatly to be praised.
the infirmity, everything that comes against us, everything right now. We speak peace right now. We speak peace right now. We speak healing right now. We send your power. Send your power. Send your anointing. Send your healing power. Send it right now. As we lift up her name, we lift up your name. The name above all names. We put you right now. We put our name on the altar. We pull everybody on the altar that's been attacked. We can call it out right now. Every infirmity, we call it out right now. You can't have your people. You can't have it. Devil's a liar. The devil, you are a liar. You are defeated. And God is exalted. The devil's a liar. He is defeated. And God is exalted. God be exalted. You get the glory. You get it today. You get the honor. You get it today. Whatever you have need of, whoever you do to have need of, I dare you to put that name in the atmosphere right now. Put it in the atmosphere right now. Put it in the atmosphere right now. We put it on the atmosphere. We lay it at the altar right now. Every child, every niece, every nephew, every son, every daughter, every grandchild, every granddaughter, every brother, every sister, every husband, every wife, everybody. We call you out right now. We call you out right now. Be saved. Be free. Be delivered. Turn from your wicked ways. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways. And humble themselves and pray. He's gonna heal the land. He'll heal the land. If you turn, if you lift him up, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto thee. If I be lifted up, I feel my mother's spirit. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. So lift him. Lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up. Lift the Savior up. We lift you up, Father. We lift up your name. Woo. Jesus. 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 Come on, he's turning our church back to prayer. He's turning our worship back to prayer. He's turning so he be lifted up. So his glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Do lift it up. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Lord, be lifted high. Lord, be lifted high. Lord, be lifted high. Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Come on, Zion. Lift up your voice. Cry out. Cry out, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Maker, provider, miracle worker, strong tower, provider, our healer, our savior. We call you and be magnified. Come on, we got too much power. We got too much anointing. We got too much in us. For us not to be able to call on the name of the Lord. And he not respond. For us not to be called on the name of Jesus. And he not meet us. For us not to call on his name. And he not come in. So let him come in, Father. 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 Move, oh God. Have your way, oh God. 
Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Do what you came to do. Do what you came to do today, Father. 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 Go. We can't do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just lift your hands in his presence and say, Father, here we are. Father, here we are. Father, we need you. Father, here I am. I surrender. I surrender all. My soul said yes. My soul cried yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, to your will. Yes, Lord. Here I am. Yes, Lord. Here we are. Yes, Lord. Here we are. Come see about us. Come meet us today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go, come back down and let me see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We're at that service part where we welcome you, our platforms, YouTube and Facebook, and all of you that are here. We welcome you this morning. Welcome into the house of the Lord. Now, we're going to greet our brothers and sisters. I don't care how you do it, but greet somebody. Amen? So let's get up and let's greet our brothers and sisters in Jesus' name.
say God is a good God. We 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 say God is a good God. Yes, he is. We say God is a mighty God. Yes, he is. We say God is a mighty God. Yes, he is. We say God is a mighty God. Yes, he is. We say God is a mighty God. Yes, he is. 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 What do you know about Jesus? Do you know about Jesus? Do you know about Jesus? He's all right. What do you know about Jesus? He's all right. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. today, but I'm not going to do that. All right, we are up to the announcements. Thank you, guys. God bless you. God bless you. Woo! We serve a mighty God. We serve a good God. And if you don't know it after the election, you're going to know. Amen? Woo! Bless the Lord. <laughs> right, you're going to know, baby. So if you don't have a prayer life, I encourage you to get started. As I tell the Young people back there in the back, any situation can become a prayer. Okay? If you walk on, what, what is the words, words legend? Where is the scripture? Mark 9 and 23 legend? What's the scripture? What does it say, man? Well, well, bless the Lord. Woo! Hey, if you can believe it and you pray it, no doubt God will work it out for you. Because it's nothing too hard for him. Let me get on with these announcements before my secret come out. All right. We're not having children's church today. You got to see after your own little bitty ones today. Amen. All right. 
Tuesday night Bible study, 7 a.m. in person and via Zoom. Wednesday, Word of Wisdom, 7.30 with Counselor Washington via Zoom. Our upcoming events, ladies, are y'all ready? Yeah. November 22nd, 23rd, we're going to our little one purpose outing. We're going to have a vacation. No kids, no husbands, nobody else, just us. <laughs> Amen. Uh, December the 7th, we're going to have our grocery giveaway again. But we're giving away a lot of groceries, aren't we? And the, and the lines was around the corner, about down, the, down the street, around the corner, behind the houses yesterday. Yes, Lord. And on December the 17th at 730, we're having our Christmas banquet. Who coming to town? Who coming to town? Holy Smoke Barbecue. <laughs> yes, they're going to cater for us. Bless the Lord. And December 31st, we're going to have our New Year's Eve service. And let me not forget to make this announcement to the seniors. There will be no more meetings for the month of November. But we will, you guys will resume back in December. Am I correct? Amen. All right, the snack shop is open. They call it the Hop Snack Shop. And it's just that everything is 25 cents to 50 cents. Some of, some of the kids will bless others and put a whole dollar, $2. This young man over here with his head on the wall, he puts in $5 and tell everybody to come get something. Amen. Amen. Find your ministry. We have all of these ministries. Do you have a bulletin? All of the ministries that we have available at this church is here, and their leaders are on the side of the ministries, and if you need or want to be a part of any of those, you can see those leaders. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you have any other information or you want to know anything else, you can see Dr. Yolanda G. Butler. Amen. All right. Now, well, we thank you guys for being up to this point, being obedient and helping us with service this morning. Everybody play a, a part in what we're doing today. Amen. All right. I think what we want to do is give some money today. Yes, we're going to give God a whole lot of money today. <laughs> All right, well, let me bring up the bishop and let him take over from here. Amen. Okay, so before bishop speak, I want to talk to you about the grace winners. We have uh, first place, we have, I think it's Kiara. Kiara William, Willingham, 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 come get your money. Yes. We have the uh, Simmons and the Willinghams at battle. Uh, and then we have Shania Simmons, second place. Is she here today? I give this to you. And then Kyra Williams, third place. I mean, Willingham, $10. Bless the Lord. All right. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Thank the Lord for our young people. Amen. Participating. It sounds hollow. You got to adjust that for me. Amen. We just thank God for God is good. Amen. We thank the Lord for those that came out today. Amen. Just keep my daughter in prayer. They had to rush her to the hospital this morning. That's when my wife and them are not here. She had allergic reactions. They said she's doing good. Amen. But we thank God. Amen. So the enemy is always trying, but amen. But that's why you always got to be battle, battle ready, amen. As a child of God, you got to be always battle ready, amen. It, it don't shake us. It don't. It don't. It don't bring us in the place of 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 being nervous, amen. Amen. Just make us work hard. It just make us more determined, amen. To push the kingdom of God, amen. So we thank God, amen. I thank God, amen, that he, that he is still working and he's still in control of everything. Amen. So we thank God for that. So, amen, it is offering time, amen. Offering time. Time that we're able to sow seed into ministry. A time that we'll be able to give. God has blessed us, amen, to be able to sow seed. We thank God that God puts a seed in our hand so that we're able to put a seed in the kingdom, that when you put a seed in the kingdom, God will be able to put more seeds in your hand. 
the scripture says that if was you he gives seed to the sower <clears throat> and he said that he may give more seed that God may give you back more and more seed that you can give more and more seed so you stop the process of how many seeds come by when you start even when God bless you with more seed you keep more for yourself but if you keep sowing the seed God will keep increasing you amen that's his law the law of the, of the law of sowing and reaping, amen, God has already established that. <clears throat> all right. If you're a farmer and you have a farm and you plant three rows of corn, that's all you can expect for harvest. But next year, you say, well, I got more seeds. I'm going to plant six rows. You done doubled, amen, what you had. <clears throat> so, amen, eventually you have a whole acre, amen, that you plant. And then two acres, you keep increasing now you just don't have enough to feed your family, but now you have enough to sell that you can bring in. Ah. And so that's why God wants to give us more seed, that we will have more seed to sow, that he can put more resources back into our hands. <clears throat> amen. God wants us to be able to, amen, he wants to take care of all of our needs, and he wants us to be able to be a channel to be a blessing to others. Amen. And so God wants us, so he's put this in, in operation. So I don't care where you at. Amen. I've lived through this, amen, for years. Amen. That we lived through it when we had lean, didn't hardly have anything. But we never, we never had bad credit. We never had, we never was late on anything because we knew how to sow seed. And because we sowed seed, God always, amen, provided seed for us. Amen. We, we put ourselves in that position. Amen. Because when you believe the word of God, you will operate the word of God. See, believe in the word, faith has to have action behind it. If there's no action, that's not faith. Hello. So when I believe it, I will act upon it. So when I believe the word, I will act upon it. And that goes in every area of your life. You've got to believe the word and act upon the word. And when you believe the word and act upon the word, then you obligate God to do what he says. You can never say, God, amen. You can never say, God, you give. God, you haven't blessed me. God, I need this and I need that. But if you haven't done your part. Huh? God said, if you give the tithe and the offering, he said, see, prove me, try me, see if I won't open up the windows of heaven. God waiting on you. Hello, somebody. So when I do what I'm supposed to do, then I can go to God, and God has to do it. Because one thing God can't do, he cannot lie. And God, that one thing, he said he sent his word. When he sent his word, it don't come back to him void. He said that he watches over his word to perform his word. So if God said all of that, that means if I find it in the Word and I put the right application to it, I obligate God to do it. Because once he speaks a word, he is held captive to his own word. See, God ain't like us. We can say, yeah, I bet, hey, yeah Pastor Walker, I'm going to give you $1,000 and then never give it to you. But if God said I'm going to give it to you, he's obligated to do it because he ain't a liar. Hello, somebody. And so because God is not a liar, I can put confidence and trust in his word. I don't have to see him to believe him. I don't even have to feel nothing to believe him. I just believe what is written. Amen. Paul said, I'm persuaded. <laughs> uh, you got to realize I'm persuaded. When you are persuaded by the word of God, amen, even in the most dire situation, you don't, you don't, you, you, you don't get nervous. Amen. You don't fall out and have a panic attack because you know that God, amen, is going to back up his word. Amen. He didn't say that the enemy, I wouldn't feel his breath on my neck. He didn't say that he wouldn't come up against me. He just said he can't prosper. Hello, somebody. Don't mean that I'm not going to be in the ring with him. It just means that he can't beat me. Amen. We thank the Lord. We're getting ready at this time. We ask that you would stand. Amen. The urshers will lead you from the rear after we pray. Father, we thank you for this time to be able to sow seed in ministry. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your blessing. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to give. God, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us resources to give. We thank you for the job. We thank you for the health and strength. 
And Father, if it wouldn't have been for you that made provisions for us, then God, we would not have anything to give. So God, we thank you that you keep the roof over our head. Lord, we thank you that you provide food on our table. God, we thank you that you give us amen, money to, amen, to even own our car and drive our car and pay for the insurance. God, we thank you because everything we have is because of you. So God, we're going to do as you said. You said if we will give, you will cause men to give back unto us. You will cause them to do it with good measures. You will make them press it down, shake it together, and you will cause them, amen, to run over. You will make them give unto our bosom. So, Father, we thank you, amen, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. The urchins will lead you at this time. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for truly God is good. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Let's give him one good praise. Give me one good Shabbat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Amen. For Amen. Our musicians. We thank God for their faithfulness. Being committed. We thank the Lord for them. Amen. Thank the Lord for Pastor Washington and Amen. And First Lady Washington and Rosa Sharon Ministry. We Thank the Lord for Pastor Walker and First Lady Walker. Amen. She's out there working and amen. Half a arm and half a leg, but she still is out there working and working and working. Amen. We thank the Lord for them and the repair of the breach. And we thank the Lord even for my wife. Amen. She's at the hospital with my daughter. And we thank God for Praise Center. Amen. God is awesome. We're going to go right to the Word of God this morning. We're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastic. Amen. We're going to go to... Ecclesiastes 3.15. When you have it, just stand to your feet and we'll be able to proceed as a sign of reverence to the Word of God. Amen. The most precious thing to the believer is the Word. The most powerful thing to the, in the world is the Word. And so therefore, when something is great, you honor it. Amen. You honor it by, amen, standing, amen, to it. If the president walks in the door, I don't care who you are, you're going to stand up. If you're in the court of law, I don't care how bad you are. I don't care how many life sentences and how many charges they got. When that judge walk in, you're going to stand up on your feet. Amen. So when the word of God comes forth, we stand, amen, as a sign of reverence to his word. This one verse we're going to deal with today. Amen. In Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 15. And the word of the Lord reads, that which has been is now, and that which is to be have already been. And God requires that which is past. 
I'm going to read from uh, uh, the NIT. It says, what is happening now has happened before. And what will happen in the future has happened before. Because God makes the same thing happen over and over again. Amen. Tell your neighbor as you take your seat, say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm living in the past. I'm living in the past. <clears throat> It'll make sense in a little while. I'm living in the past. <clears throat> you know, we, we have a saying, sometimes you can look at people and you say, man, they stuck in the past. I mean, how do you know that people are stuck in the past? Because he meant the way, he meant the way they talk, they still talk and use slang from the past. The way they wear their hairstyle, they still wearing jerry curls and mullets, still wearing beehives, amen. So you say they just stuck in the past. They still wearing what they dress, they still wearing, amen, polyester, amen, suits, amen, with big wide ties, amen. They just stuck in the past, amen. Some people, amen, you can see, amen, they age because their car is almost old as them because they just stuck in the past. Have you ever met somebody stuck in the past and everything that come out of their mouth is back in the day. I remember back in the day. They stuck. Amen. They, they can't, you can't really relate to them in the present because they always tell you back in the past, back in the day. <clears throat> but the thing is, I have to admit, I'm stuck in the past too. There are certain things that I still do. Amen. Amen. I still, amen, I still like my suits to be three-quarter length. I don't like that short, skinny stuff. Amen. I, I'm still stuck in the past. I still believe that a man can live with one woman for his lifetime. <clears throat> I'm stuck in the past. I still believe, <clears throat> amen, that, amen, that we, that I still believe in old time holiness and the old landmark. Yes, I'm stuck in the past because, amen, I know that God, amen, that God, amen, is a God, amen, that never changes. The thing we've got to understand is that we've got to understand that God, amen, wants his people to get to the place that we learn how to be stuck in the past. I'm going to get you there. Amen. You've got to understand. But what I want to submit, amen, you've got to understand that God is trying to get us someplace and we're looking for some new revelation. And we're looking for a new word. <clears throat> and we're going from this church and that church and running from this preacher to that preacher only to find out there's nothing new under the sun. <clears throat> Praise God, I've got to get you there. <clears throat> Amen. As we look at life over the span of our lifetime, Amen. we can see how our life, we have seen multiple changes because the world is considerably, constantly advancing. I remember the telephone. And back in the day, I remember that the telephone used to be on the wall. And, and you had, and if you wanted to talk in your room, you had to have a real long cord. And you had to drag it all through the house to go to your room. I remember that even we had a rotary dial, so you had to go five, seven. It took you about 10 minutes to dial a number. And if you messed up, you had to hang up and start all over again. And then the telephone got advanced, and we went to push button. And then we got more fancier, and then we went to answering machine. And if you was driving down the street and you had to call somebody, you used to have to pull over and go to a telephone booth, amen, and put 25 cents in to make a call. Amen. But now, amen, it has changed. We got these little things that we put in our pocket. It can go everywhere we go. We walk around with a computer. We can do business from the phone. You can send emails. You can, you can send text messages. You can talk on the phone. You can even sign documents and send it back. Amen. You can run a whole business. You can fax information all from a little phone. You can visit the whole world through your phone. You can do video chat all through the phone because, amen, in the, because things have changed. But what causes men to struggle? 
struggle with God, and I believe the reason why men think that God is outdated is because of the very fact God is unmutable. Oh, God, let me help you. Unmutable means that he is unchanging, that all through time you can never, God will never change, and you cannot change God no matter what you try. He's unmutable, which means he is a permanent foundation. He never changes. He never gets out of character. He's always the same, and, and you better be glad that God is unmutable, because if God start looking at your life and say, remember all the things you used to do, and God said, you know what, I'm going to get you anyway, and God can flip the script, amen, and punish you for everything you done done that he said he forgave you for because God is unmutable and he doesn't change amen that's why I can be secure in him Amen. That's why when you look in the back of Malachi, amen, when it, in the sixth, chapter, sixth verse when it says, For I am the Lord and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. Amen. That is powerful because he says this just before he gets you ready to deal with tithes and offering. He says, look, you sons of Jacobs. He said, because I'm immutable, because I do not change, I have not consumed you, which means I didn't kill you. I should have killed you because you stole from me. You stole the tithe you stole the offering and the reason why I'm not going to take you out because I do not go back on my word because I made promise with your dad your grandfather <coughs> Abraham, Isaac and Jacob because I made promise with them I can't take you out because I don't change and that's good that God doesn't change Amen, because God, amen, if he says something, that's what he means. If he said, if you trust him, amen, he'll be there for you. If he say he'll never leave you nor forsake you, I don't care how dark it gets, he'll never leave you, forsake you. I don't care because God never changed. If God says he can walk through the valley of shadow of death and you don't have to fear no evil because he's going to be there to protect you, then you can walk through the valley of shadow of death. You can break that to the bank. God ain't going to get scared. God ain't going to run out on you. God ain't going to forget you. God's going to be there because... Because God does not change. Our current events are namely a replay of what has happened previously. So we think it's current, but it's something that already existed before. Let me help you. In other words, it's just like we said, man, it was a, we had a bad storm to come through. A hurricane came through, but we have been having hurricanes. Huh? You said, well, it was a bad earthquake and it it killed many, but we've been having earthquakes. There's nothing that we see in today's society that haven't already happened before. Amen. Because the thing is that God says that I require the past. God arranges everything on a reoccurring basis so that things will happen over and over and over again. Let me help you. See, the thing is, you can pinpoint where we are today in society by looking at history. You can look at the corruption on the earth. You can look at the mindset of people, and you can find it through the Scripture, and you'll know right exactly what God's going to do next because everything keeps coming over and over again. Amen. He brings back again what is past, and through history, he repeats itself. And we call it new, but it ain't nothing new. Amen. We think that what we do now is new. We think that our style and our dress is new. It ain't nothing new. They've been doing it. How many times can you recreate clothes? You might can change colors, but all these colors have always been in existence. He meant you can't do, you can change style, but it's a style that's already been. You got, I mean, you got pants, you got a dress, you got a skirt, you got a blouse. He meant you got a jacket, you can only do so much with it. Huh? It's nothing new. These skinny suits ain't nothing new. We used to wear them in the 70s. It's nothing new. He meant it's no new style. He meant it's all just recreates itself over and over again. When you look at life, what is, amen, when you look at life, amen, what is it to conquer that hasn't already been conquered? When you, when, amen, when you, when you, when you look at discovery, what has not already been discovered? Huh? It's, it's, it might be new to you, but it's already been done. There's only the fight to recover what has been lost. 
And when you find it, even to get lost, you find it again. That's all that we can do because it's already been in existence. So the scripture says that God requires that which is past. That's what God wants. He said, I'm recalling in the past. That's what I require from you is the past. It's going to help you in a minute. Nothing is now that is not, that has not always been, amen, is now and always been. In other words, it's always been in existence. And what, and what is, and because it exists today, it has to take, it has to give credit to the past. Everything that you have now is because past, the past has already created it. And all we're doing is reventing what's already been created. Amen. The, we say the caveman created the fire, and now we can just cut on a stove and get fire. Now you can get a little, a little lighter and click it, and it'll give you fire. Amen. You don't have to take two rocks and strike them no more. But it's still the same fire. Huh? Uh, we may have made it easy, but it's the same thing over and over. So the thing you've got to understand, your future is in God's past. Everything in your future is God's past. I'm going to help you. Uh, that's why a visionary has a hard time getting people to catch up with the vision because it's his past. You got to understand that you are visionary. You got a vision for your life, what you want to accomplish, where you want to be in five years, that in been 10 years, when you get 60 or 50, you say, I want to retire. You got a vision. But it's hard to get people to catch up to the vision because it's your past. And because for them, it's something new. And you know, people don't like change. So now the visionary who's living out something that he already been dealing with in the past, amen, in the future is past for him. And now he's got to bring you to the place, amen. Of, of change and you don't want to change because you know people don't like to change and so you don't want to change but it's new to you but it's old it is <coughs> the inventor <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the inventor inventions are out of his past and once the inventor invention is manifest it's his it, to him it's just past things that he already came up with. So what you have to realize is that your past is waiting for your future to catch up to it. Tell your neighbor, say you, what you got to realize <clears throat> is that your past, even your future, your past is waiting for your future to catch up to it. Oh, God, tell your neighbor, say, your past, your past, your past. Amen, I'm going to help you right here. It's your past, your past. So, so, so what, you got, what you have to do, <clears throat> you, you, the Bible says that faith is now. Mm -hmm. So you'll now have to, you have to believe now for you to re be blessed in your tomorrow. If I can't believe God to heal me now, I'll never get healed tomorrow. If I can't believe God to bless me now, I'll never be blessed in my tomorrow. Because you got to understand something. Bible says that hope, faith is the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So hope is always future. So how do I get the future in the now to me? Faith joins what I believe in for in the future to come into reality now. So I've got to believe, amen, now to, in order to see the future to come to pass. <coughs> so how does this happen? So why are you struggling with the future when you, are, are, when you already dealt with it in your past? I got to, you say, what? Well, you keep talking about past and future. and Man, wait, wait, stop, stop, stop being the riddlers right now. I need you to deal and show me. Your prayers is dealing with, is dealing with issues that you are facing that you have already faced and prayed for. Let me help you. You say, well, how can my, how, how can I not struggle with future things? And you said, I already dealt with it in my past. Well, when you prayed and you asked God to help you and God answered you and said, I'm going to take care of it. Didn't you pray for that in your past? 
And if God said he already handled it, why are you struggling with your future when you already dealt with it in your past? And so it's already dealt with. Why are you struggling with something that God already gave you the answer to? Why are you struggling with things when you got to go to the word of God and God gave you the solution in the word and you still struggling with talking about God are you going to do it when the word in your past, God already gave you the answer. See, the thing is, we, we, we struggle with things that we already prayed for, we already fasted for, we already stood for, and now, amen, we're struggling with things, and God has already given us the answer in our past. You didn't fast for those days. You didn't fast for those months after months. You didn't pray for those weeks after week, amen, for not, for not, for God not to, amen, give you the answer. You already got the breakthrough. You already got the victory, but the thing is, you're struggling in your future because you haven't seen it come tangibly but when God gave you your answer when God gave you your breakthrough you already dealt with the thing so why are you dealing with something that he already gave you victory over you ought to be praising and magnifying him in your, in your presence <laughs> so therefore you already dealt with it tell your neighbor say it's already dealt with so how do I walk in victory by getting, how do I walk in victory by getting your mind renewed by everything that was spoken over your life by God? See, if God already spoke destiny over you, then you've got to renew your mind to what God spoke because you've got to realize you're living in God's past. He told you that, amen. Then you know that God, he, when he calls you into ministry, if he calls you to do something, he calls you to do, he calls you that in your past. The thing is, you got to catch up to your past. If God said, I'm calling you to do ministry, but you ain't doing it right now because he's giving you time to prepare to catch up to ministry. You got to catch up your faith. You got to catch up your character. You got to carry catch up your lifestyle. You got to catch up even with your attitude. You got to make some adjustments in your life. You got to get to the place where God can trust you to handle the anointing. And so now God already called you what you're going to be, but you ain't ready to be it yet. So your past is waiting for your, I mean your future. Your past is waiting for your future to catch up to it. And so once you catch up to what God spoke of your life, then you can perform it. <coughs> the thing is, we have not caught up with our past yet. Ecclesiastic says it like this in 1 and 9 and 10. The things that has been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There is anything thereof. In other words, God said, there ain't nothing new. I'm just waiting for you. God has been waiting for man <clears throat> all through history to accept his son. God has been waiting all through history for man, amen, to be obedient. God been waiting for man to trust him, amen, all this time. And when God saved you, he saved you to be a believer, not a doubter. He saved you, amen, to be, amen, to be his child and not to reject him. God has called you to be his, and we're struggling with things because situations pop up in our life which change our destiny, which change our, voc our point on God. And God already dealt with it in our past when he saved us by the the blood of the lamb. God had already gave us victory in the past and you still struggling with stuff that you already dealt with. 1 Corinthians 10 13 says, there have no temptation took in you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which are able with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be, be, be able to bear it. So I must believe God's word. I must believe God's past work to help me get through my present now. In other words, when I, why do you think God left his word on record? To give you his past resume. See, your resume is your past. Your past body of work. So when you go for a new job, 
They say that one of resume. You got a resume? They want to see what you already accomplished. They want to see what you already have done. They already want to see what your skill set is. And so what they do, they'll call your past employer to get, amen, information. Was they a good employer? Was they on time? See, it's your past, amen, that handles your future. And so now, amen, they're dealing with your past. And so the same thing here, that God, amen, you got to believe in God's past work. In the past, God, amen, brought you out when you didn't have nothing. In the past, God healed your body when you were sick. In the past, amen, God answered your prayers when your kids was acting crazy. In the past, amen, when you called upon the name of the Lord and God responded to you. In your past, when you look at God's past work, amen, it should be able to handle anything that comes in your future because in the past, God did it. And if God did it in the past, he said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I handle your yesterday today and I'll handle your today and down the road I'll handle that too because I'm the God of the past and so God said what I'm requiring of you is the past I need you to tap into the past if God did it in the past he'll do it right now if God made a way in the past he'll do it right now if God worked a miracle in the past he'll work a miracle in the now so I got a resume I got something to stand on so when it looks impossible Pastor Washington, I stand on the past results of what God has already did in my life. Tell your name, say, go back to the past. If God answered you in the past, if God worked it out in the past, if God comforted you in your lowest moment in the past, if God turned it around in the past, he'll do it right now. God, that's the problem. Amen. We, we forget too fast. The problem with man, he forgets too fast. He forgets what you've done for me. Have you ever did something, amen, for somebody? Amen. And then the next month, they act like they, you ain't did nothing for them. They forgot, amen, that you took them in and let them live with you for a month. They forgot, amen, that you paid their rent last month. They forget, amen, that you helped them. Amen. When they couldn't help themselves. Amen. But now, amen, now they act like you ain't done nothing for them and that you still owe them something. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's time to go back to the past because God, amen, what God has revealed. So God has revealed in the past. What has God revealed to you in the past? If God revealed something to you in his word, if God revealed something to you when you pray, if God revealed something to you when you fasted, if God revealed something to you, then why are you struggling now when he already dealt with it in your past? Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I ain't worried. Amen. You know why I don't get worried? Because I already know that God already dealt with it in my past. God already made a way in my past. That God already worked it out in my past. That's why I didn't have to struggle with was this church coming up. Because God made a promise, amen, 40, 38 years ago in my past. I just had to hold on to the word. That's why I wouldn't get discouraged. That's why I wouldn't give up. Because I had a revelation. I had a word from God. And I want you to know that God has given you a word. And you've got to stand on that word. God has given you a word. Why are you giving up? Amen. If God gave you a revelation of what he's going to do in your future, it's no need for you to be fretful now. Because it's in your past that he already gave you the answer to your now. See, we forget about what God has spoken to us in the past. If God sent somebody you didn't even know, a stranger, and prophesied a word into you to confirm what God has already been dealing with you with, and now you worry, somebody that you didn't even know, step up and say, the Lord told me to tell you, and you know it was God because you've been praying about the thing, and now God gives you confirmation because a prophet only supposed to confirm what God has already been dealing with you with. And so when the confirmation comes, he done spoke the word. If God said that you're going to be mighty, then you're going to be mighty. If God said, I'm going to bless your business, then God's going to bless your business. I don't care if you just bounce the check. I don't care if you just fold it up and close the business down. That amen, you're going to be a successful businessman, a successful businesswoman. One day, because God done already spoke it to you in your past. Did you forget that God said he was going to handle the thing that you're dealing with? Did you forget that God said, I'm already going to heal you? 
them? Did you forget that God said, I'm going to save them children? Did you forget that God said, don't worry about it. Go to sleep. I got it handled. Don't you know that God already dealt with it in your past? That's why I can have joy unspeakable right now. I might not have 50 cents, but I'm not worried about it because God said he's going to take care of me. And if God going to take care of you, you ain't got to worry. Because he dealt with me in his past. And God is a God that says, I require of you this day the past. And so God already told you what he wants you to do. But see, the enemy tries to disturb what God has said in the past. And so God says, look, I got you got to catch up to what I already spoken. And if I spoke it, you know I don't lie. If I spoke it, you know I don't go back on what I said. If I spoke it, you know I'm going to perform it. And I don't care how long it takes, but it shall come to pass. And that's why you got to realize that God already dealt with you. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, he told me back in the day that he was going to bless me. That's why I'm not worried about what I got now because God done already told me back in the day. Back in the day, God told me that he was going to heal my body. That's why I'm not worried about it right now because God already spoke it back in the day. Back in the day, God told me that he was going to bring my children even off the street and bring them back into the house of God. Back in the day, God done already told me that he was going to work a miracle for me. Back in the day, tell your neighbor, say, back in the day, God saved you out of the muck and mire. That's why you don't have to worry about your mama will go back to the world. No, he saved you back in the day. He saved you from the world. You ain't got to go back to the world. <clears throat> yeah, back in the day, I you ever go upside your head. But I'm not going to go up there now because he delivered me back in the day. I ain't worried about cussing nobody out. Why? Because back in the day, he delivered me. How am I worried about even going postal on nobody? Because back in the day, he set me free from anger. Amen. I ain't worried about that stuff because God already dealt with it in the past. Tell your neighbor, say, the reason why that I can walk in victory because I'm living in the past. I'm living in the past work of the Father. I'm living in the past. I'm living in the word that God spoke to me. I'm living in the past what God has already performed in my life. So now I'm convinced uh, no matter what comes in my life, it can't stop me because in the past it couldn't stop me. The problem is with us. We live in the past of the negative. We live in the past of past failures. So that's paralyzing us from moving into the future. We're living in the past negatives, which keeps us with a doubtful mind. We live in the past traumas, which causes us that we can't trust no more. We're living in the past defeats, and so that's why we're afraid to try anymore. But tell your neighbor, say, that's not the past God wants you to live in. God wants you to live in the past of his word. Amen. God wants you to live in the past of the plans that he has made for you. He said, I made plans for you. Amen. And they're not of evil, but of good. God said, I'm going to have your expected end to be prosperous. Don't you know that God already planned your life out? Don't you know in the past before he created you, he already knew what you was going to be. And you worried about tomorrow when he said, fret not about tomorrow because the day has enough trouble. Worry about today. Tell your neighbor. Amen. He worked it out in the past. Tell your neighbor, he already done it. Tell your neighbor, it's already victory that's already come. Tell your neighbor, when you was running around the church shouting, amen, and you didn't know what you were shouting for, God said, because I worked it out in the past. I know trouble was coming, but I worked it out in the past. I know the devil was coming after you, but I worked it out in the past. I know they was going to lie on you, but I worked it out in the past. And sometimes your shout right now is your deliverance for the morrow. Sometimes your hallelujah right now is your victory when the devil shows up. Tell your neighbor, I already praised him in the past for my victory right now. Come on and bless him in the house.
I'm living in the past. When I look at this program, I'm living in the past. When God gave me this back over 20-something years ago, when I began to write the dream, the vision, when I began to write it, it's on the back of the program, and when I began to write it, that's my past. I haven't caught up to everything yet, but that's my past. So what keeps me going? My past. What keeps me moving forward? My past. What keeps me from getting frustrated? My past. What stops me? What keeps me from not stopping? My past. Because I know I can't leave here yet. Because I haven't finished my past yet. I know I can't stop yet. Because I haven't completed the past yet. That's why you guys worried about stuff that God already spoke over your life. And you haven't fulfilled none of it yet. And you talking about, I don't want to die. You ain't going nowhere. Because you haven't fulfilled the past yet. But God said he was going to bless me. He was going to bless me. And he was going to have to worry about no more money issues. Well, that was 10 years ago. You still ain't learned how to deal with money yet. He said, if I gave it to you 10 years ago, you would be broke right now. But when I get through working on you, when I get through taking you through the flood, and when I get through taking you through the fire, and when I get through taking you through the season of the wilderness, and when I get through taking you through the season of lack, when I bless you this time, you won't forfeit the blessing. When I take you through what I need to take you through, then I can help you. You be ready. So my past work is preparing you for my future work that I'm going to do in your life. Tell your neighbor what's your past. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, what's your past? What's your password? Amen, what's the password that God gave you? What's your password? Did God speak over your life? What was prophesied over you? What did God reveal to you? What's the vision that God birthed in your life? Amen, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm living in the past. Everything I do today is because of my past. Every victory that I win today is because of my past. Every issue that I handle today is because of my past. Every mountain that I got to walk up against, I can handle it because of my past. Even every fire that comes, I can go through the fire because of my past. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I can handle it because of my past. Tell your neighbor, God ain't never let me down. And I know he ain't going to let you down. In the past, he didn't let me down. And I know he ain't going to let you down. Tell your neighbor, say, it ain't over with you. It ain't over with you. He meant God going to bless you. It ain't over with you. God going to make a way. It ain't over with yet. Because I've seen the past. And the past says that I win. If you just go back to the end of the book, in the end of the Bible in Revelation, it says we win. So I know I got victory. I know I'm a winner. I know I can do all things. I know that I'm more than a conqueror. Because the past said that I'm more than a conqueror. My past even says that I can do all things. Tell your neighbor, go back and look at the resume of God. We've got to look at the resume of God. Tell your name and say, your past, your past. It's your past that God's dealing with. So God already formed your life. He already spoken over your life. And then he already gave you vision. And he already gave you direction. And so he starts you off. See, let me help you out. God is a God of completion. So whenever God shows you something or God speaks something to you, it's in the completed form. You see the finished product. So when God speaks it, you say, well, God, I've seen you. I, it was this and it was that. And Lord, all the people and all this. Then he said, okay, there it is. That's the vision. He backs you up. He said, now get there. See, he spoke it here in my past. And every time I make a step, I'm going from what he said there to get me there. Because that's my past. But that's what I'm going to get. That's my past. But I'm going to obtain it. I might get hurt along the way. 
but I won't stop because the past said I'm going to have that. I might have some obstacles and some devils that fight against me, but I'm going to get there because my past said that's what you're going to get. And that's where God is trying to get you. He's trying to get you there. It's between the promise and the, well, between the, promise and the victory that you get stuck in. Because you forgot the past. What did God tell you? What did he tell you? Then why are you worried? Why do you think when you read the word of God and you're going through something, or you just be reading the word, and it seems like the word jumps off the pages, and God began to reveal what that means, illuminate it to you. You know why he, what he did that for? For a reason. That becomes your past mark. That when that situation arises, you've already been illuminated to the word to go through the issue, to go through the challenge, because God done revealed it to you. And we worried about stuff that we don't have to worry about. We worried about people, and God said, don't worry about him that can kill the body, but worry about the one that can kill the body in the soul. You shouldn't be worried about people. You should be worried about God. So if I blow you off when you talk crazy, it's not that I'm being arrogant. I know what he's saying. Oh, God help us. I can't let what you say stop me. And even when you can't catch the vision, and even when you don't understand the vision, I can't let it stop me. You think that everybody jumped on board for this? When we started off, see, let me show you how God worked. We was on Alta Mesa. We had a building ooh, with another 3,000 square feet, almost twice this size. And because of circumstances, the people left, and we had to downsize. We're going to go to the school. We ain't going to try to keep this note up. We're going to go to school. We went to the school and rented it. And then when we was getting ready to leave, I said, we're going to, the first thing I said, we're going to start, we're going to buy some land. And I said, we're going to start a 36-month seed, $36 for 36 months. We had people, I'm not, I didn't say I was going to do that. Everybody didn't get on board. Did that stop me? You know what I told the leaders? Don't leave them alone. I have folks to leave because of it. I said, leave them alone. Because I had the vision. I know what God told me in my past. <laughs> and so with the handful who caught the remnant that caught it, when we got, when we, before we put the last screw in the wall, put the last paint on the wall, the land was paid off with that $36 seed. Because the past said. Tell your neighbor, say, you need to go back and check your past. That's why you need to write down what God speaks to you. When, you. when God gives you dream, when you dream, you need to write it down. When God spoke a word to you, you need to write it down. When the word becomes illuminated, write it down. So that when you get into that tough place, you can go back to your past. And you can reassure your future going to be all right. Why? Because God said, I require the past. I demand the past to come back. So I ain't worried because God made me promise. It's things that God promised me I haven't seen yet. I'm not stopping because I got to see it first. Amen. And sometimes God make you walk the road long by yourself. It's a lonely road. And sometimes people can't catch it. But I got to keep walking it out. And I got to walk it out, not for me, but for their benefit, even though they can't catch it. Hello, somebody. See, because I know where the future is going. If you can't see it, I don't... The future is going. And 
thank God. I thank God for everybody here that God bless you. Got a roof over your head. That you got transportation. That you got a job and you eating. And got a few dollars in the bank. Because it's the homeless rate is growing by leaps and bounds. I was looking at something on YouTube the other night, and it just reinforced what I got to do by building these homes, these tiny homes. First, it was two different YouTube. The first one was a lady and her husband was homesteading. They had, they had bought 50 acres in the desert of Arizona, and they lived in Ohio. And they built a barnuminium out of metal. You always hear me talk about metal buildings. <clears throat> they was getting themselves debt. They was debt free. And they was getting ready to live off grid. But the, on 10, in the other 40, they was getting ready to build a, either a tiny home village and rent it out. They was going to live off of that. That's what we got to get to. We got to live Amen. We said, I don't want, I want my privacy. You can live in your house, they can live in your house. You living by a bunch of people you don't know now. They don't even believe. They mock your God and you live with them every day. But if we can pull together, so that inspired me. I said, Lord, I got to get this done. Amen. For my personally, for my family. The second thing was a lady, was she was in California. She was a she was trying to be an expired actor, and she was working multiple jobs, and she lived in Inglewood, California. She was in 2017. Well, the Rams, amen, the Rams, amen, was going to, they was going to build them a new stadium to come back to L.A. Because they was in L.A. before, and they left and went to St. Louis, and then now they're coming back. So they needed a new stadium because the Coliseum is old and it's out of place. It ain't, it's out of date. And so... The developers got word of it, and they bought up all the property around it because they knew it was going to be valuable. And they didn't have no rent control. So the rent went from one place up to for one bedroom up to like $35,000, like $3,000. So now she finds herself homeless, working every day, and she's homeless. And she tells the story how she's in this shelter. She said, I, I never knew, I didn't I never imagined myself living in this shelter. And when I seen that, it was another young lady. She had a bachelor's degree. She was working three jobs, and she was going back to school to get her master's, and she was in the shelter. Like that, it could change. That's why you hear me talk about tiny homes. Lord, bless us with some land. Because I know the day is coming, but I want our people to be prepared that we will have something to help. And not just the church, but we got to help the world. We can't help everybody, but we can help a few families. Because the world going to get worse, y'all. Let me help you. You say, why you keep, why you say that? I, I read the back of the Bible. And it says that there's a man going to come on the scene called the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist come on the scene, the Bible says the world going to be in total chaos. That I don't care how much money you got in the bank, it ain't going to help you because money ain't going to be worth nothing. The dollar, the Nero, the, the, the yen, amen, the peso, nothing going to be worth nothing. And the world going to be chaotic. It can't function. And a man going to step up and say, I got the solution to the world's problem. And the, le the 11 greatest nations in the world, United States, Russia, China, all these, the UK, all these great nations are going to pledge their allegiance to the Antichrist. It can't, if we at the end, like we say, it can't get no better. Your dollar, if you would go back and, I did this, you go back and ask your, your ask Google or Siri, whoever you got, and say, what was a million dollars worth in 1970 versus now? It'll blow your mind. It was a million then, which was, was probably was worth more than a million then. Compared to now, it's probably worth about a 
few hundred thousand dollars, it ain't worth nothing. If you got a million dollars today, you couldn't live off for the rest of your life unless you die. Unless you die in six months. A million dollars is great, but it won't live. You can't sustain you for the rest of your life. You can't. Hello? You have to be disciplined. If you discipline enough to live off of 50000 a month, a year, that gives you, that gives you 20 years of life. But you can't go over that. Huh? And that's, that means you can't create no bills. You got to live within that $50,000 mean. Hello? You can't go buy no big house because the tax is going to eat you. Can't go buy no fancy cars because you got to live within that. 50,000. Now, I know somebody said, I don't get 50,000 now. Well, then live where you live. Then you could get a few more years out of it. Unless you know how to invest it right and everything go right. Unless you put it into avenues that can bring residual income because a million dollars is not a million dollars. Okay, if you, you know, I know people say, if I got it, most people ain't going to pay tithes. We forget that. They're not going to pay 100000 out of the million. You can forget that. But if you do what you're supposed to, that means that leaves you with 900000 Uncle Sam says he wants 33 and a third. Is that, am I right, Dr. Perez? So that means that's what, about $337,000? That means $433,000 is going out of your million, and you ain't bought nothing yet. That means you only got five hundred and dollars Fifty-something thousand dollars. How you gonna buy a big house? How you gonna go buy a Mercedes? How you gonna buy a BMW? You ain't got nothing. And most of us gonna buy the car and the house, take a big vacation, get us a brand new wardrobe, get name brand everybody. We're gonna be wearing Louis and. Michael LaCour, all of them. We're going to be, we're going to be, you know, we're going to have all that stuff. And then Uncle Sam going to wake the whole year and say, hey, hey, I need my $333,000. And you're going to be like, I don't have it. He's going to come in and take everything that you still got and say, you owe me this amount. And now you paying Ten, five, three thousand dollars a month trying to pay him off, which you'll never pay off. Tell your neighbor said, the past is trying to get us ready for the future. Just look at it. So if you got a home, thank God, try to pay it off as soon as possible. And if it's paid off, glorify God and don't sell it. Don't get tempted about the cash. You need to set up your family, your kids for the future. The reason why black people never transfer wealth or we never get wealthy because we all got to start from scratch. Mom and them had a house. When they left it to us, we sold it. I don't want to live in that thing. You just walked away from your generational wealth. Because if you would have just took 10 years and saved your rent. Then you could have bought another house. You have two, you have a house, two house income. Then you can buy rent a house. You got the house you're living in. And then even you build your you build your wealth off of what you're gonna pay for rent. And you ain't gotta, you don't have to have a great job, you just gotta have the right position. And so if, our, if we can teach that to our kids. But see, we don't take them to the bank and teach them how to give, how to save. We just, they, we want them tennis shoes, they're $300. Mama going to get it. You ready to tell that boy you're going to get some pay less? Well, pay less ain't existing anymore. No I'm going to get you, we're going to find whatever's on sale. I got a $50 budget, that's what you're going to get. I don't need you to be trendy. I don't need you to be trendy. I need you to get some knowledge in your head. 
I'm going to stop right here. We had, a, we had a guy that I grew up with live next door. He was older than me. And, this, and his, his nickname was Cotton because he was always sharp. He, he walked around. He didn't work. He walked around with slacks and shoes. And he was clean all the time. But one day it ran out. The women stopped taking care of him. He never had a car. He walked everywhere. But he was clean. But what happened to him, he started living on his mama's porch. He was standing out begging for a quarter, a dollar, 50 cents. He died on his mother's porch from the weather. And he, could, he went to the army, got a dishonorable discharge, went to the government and got a job. That's unheard of. He could get the best of jobs, but he said working was for fools and mules. So I'm not giving you my money because you either I'm a fool or a mule, so I'm sure I'm going to give you mine. Why did I say that? Because we don't understand that you got an opportunity. Let me help you out. If your parents is gracious enough after you graduate to let you stay at their house, don't think it's a free ride because that day going to end too. And you ain't got, those years you could have got your college degree. You could at least got a good, got a job. You could at least start saving money to get yourself a position and stop handicapping your kids by not making them. It's no way you're going to live in my house and you ain't going to work. You're either going to go to school or you're going to work. And you're going to save because I'm going to make sure you save because you're going to live with me forever. I got, to, I got to teach you how to survive. I got to teach you wisdom. So giving them everything, we say, well, I didn't have what I, that's, but it, but it made you what you are. That's why you got what you got because you didn't have it. But you give them everything, you spoil them and they ain't going to want nothing. They're they looking for a handout all the time. Learn from the past. Learn from the past. Saints of God, that's that's position ourselves. We need to get in. We need to we need to come together and and and, and make some investments together. Amen. And I ain't talking about you giving a whole lot of money, but that's purchase a piece of land and 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 get it developed and and get some income coming in. We we need to we need to stop being so divided. The families can't even come together. I want a big house, but what I need a big house for and my kids ain't got a house. Let's get a piece of land and put enough houses for everybody to live on it. I'm, I'm done. I'm getting off my soapbox. I'm meddling now. I done got away from the past. I'm Because uh, I don't want history to repeat itself. Some of us are struggling right now because of bad decisions. We have, yeah, I don't, since I've been here, I never heard so many people lost land that was given to them because they didn't know the value of it. Because they thought it was just in the stick somewhere. You, you guys know Colleyville, right? You know that Colleyville was owned by all blacks? The whole city was owned by black people. It was farmland. Colleyville is like Beverly Hills now. It's million-dollar homes, multi-million-dollar homes. The black folks sold the fortune, didn't they? Don't the kids sold it. Hold on what you get. Hello, somebody. Let me help you. There's going to be more people going to be living off grid. Don't laugh at them, folks. You better learn. Going to be more people living stealth. You know what stealth living is? To live stealth? You know what stealth means? It means to be, to be there, to be undetective. You know, like we got the stealth plane that they, the radar can't get it. Well, to live stealth means that they even live in a van or a truck or something, but it just looks like a regular van, but they park all over the city living there and people don't know. They do that because that way they can't be, the police won't run them off. 
so they might get a U-Haul truck and, and they convert it into a camper in the back so they can park it anywhere, not a big one, but big enough to live in. Or they might get, a, might get one of them Sprint vans and they turn it into, and they can live anywhere in the city without paying rent. They got the bed, they got the kitchen, they got everything. You think I'm, go to YouTube and look that up. You're going to be surprised at how many women are doing that. We got women that's living in cars, trucks, and they travel the whole country by themselves. They live in, that's how they live in. <laughs> Hello, somebody. This is real. I take time to tell you stuff like this to, to keep it on your mind. If you've got kids, let me help you do this. And you got something to leave them, don't give it to them. Listen to me. Let me finish my statement. Put it in a living trust. And you specify, because if you know they're bad with money, don't give them the money. Not all at one time. You give it to them so much a month. So you say, well, I got enough money to keep them living for 20 years. You give it to them over a month. If it's 500 a week, that's what you give them. Don't give them the, don't give them the, the $500,000. They ain't going to have it. If it's a house, you put it in a trust, you cannot sell it. You can rent it, you can live in it, but you can't sell it. And have the trust to make sure that the taxes is paid so they don't lose it. One day they're going to wake up and see, man, I'm glad mama left that she did it. Like first I was madder, but I know now. So you got to help them be wise. I'm going to say this. I know I keep saying that, but I'm going to say this. This is it for real. This is it. I had a nephew. His grandmother passed. His great-grandmother. He got about $280,000 cash. He has a house that she left him was worth about five, about six or seven hundred thousand. In less than about a year, he couldn't pay the taxes on the house. You got to be wise enough. To, you know your kids. You know if they're good with money or not. Don't set them up for failure. You worked hard all your life to pay that house off and they lose it in a year, two years because they don't value it. You put it in a trust to make sure that they don't lose it. You be wise for them. Be wise for them. So you got to make them beneficiary of it. But see, the beneficiary can only do what you, what, you what you tell it to do. They can't step out. I'm the beneficiary. I can take it. You can't take it off. But you got to make them the beneficiary of it. And don't get the one who's crazy. Get the one that got sense to divvy it out. All right, I'm leaving you alone. Amen. We thank the Lord. We hope we said something to encourage your heart. Ask your neighbor, say, where you living at? I don't know about you, but I'm living in the past. Amen. I'm living in the past. Amen. God has blessed some of you, amen, to accumulate some stuff. Be wise with it. Amen. Help your kids. Help them for real. Amen. Help them for real. Amen. Teach them the value. Amen. There might be someone here, this, before we go into communion, might need to know Jesus in the part of your sins. We would like to give you that opportunity. If you're here and you say, I want to get this right with God. I want to give my heart to the Lord. Amen. If you're here, I would like to give you that opportunity. I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, if there's anyone at the crossroads of decision, that, Father, that the Holy Spirit would draw them. Because no man can come unto you unless the spirit of redemption draws them. Regeneration. So, Father, I'm praying, Holy Spirit, that you go and move on that heart. And 
bring them to the place of safety. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. If you're here and you say, I want to get it right with God, would you just lift your hand right where you are? Say, I want to get this together with God. Amen. Is there one? Amen. We, we thank the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord. Well, we're going to open up the doors of the church. It might be someone that want to become a part of the membership. Amen. We would like to give you that opportunity. Amen. If you're here and you want to become a part of the ministry, just lift your hands. Amen. I'd like to give you an opportunity. Amen. Well, we thank God for truly God is good. Amen. We're getting ready for communion at this time. Amen. We're going to move on. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't move away from the past. Live in it.